Okay, you know. All right. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, number 210. Um, this is uh, March 26th, uh, 2024, and we are recording this at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So, um, and uh, this is, uh, my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Time and Research. And uh, today we're going to be bringing you some Anal uh, some analysis from um, 10 different uh, educators. So, of course, these presentations are for educational purposes only. Trading is not suitable for all people. And uh, please consult a financial advisor and only trade with money you can afford to lose. Uh, all sessions are going to be recorded individually, and those will be available on timingresearch.com as soon as I can get them processed. Also, if you search for Timing Research on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, you can uh, get the recordings that way as well. So um, uh, up first, we have uh, Fausto Puglisi of CyberTradingUniversity.com, a longtime friend of uh, the show and uh, of Timing Research. And so great to have him here to open the day for us. So uh, go ahead and turn it over to him. Thanks a lot, David, and thanks everyone for coming here. Hopefully everyone's all excited uh, what's going on and uh, getting ready for this big event. It's always nice to come back at Time and Research. David always run a good show, known for almost, my God, it's going to be over a decade now doing these events with him. So I'm glad they're being very successful. Before we get started, we did ask one question. Uh, where is everybody from, by the way? I want to know where everybody's logged in from, because that's important because, you know, it, it has to do with when's the good time for you to trade when's a bad time for you to trade everything else so where's everybody's logged in i see we got people in here short gun i don't know who you are david <laughs> greg i see you in here everyone here just let me know uh, i got one person from louisville all right love it down there donna all right i don't know what the time zone is there but down there but uh louisville always likes going down to the kentucky derby been there about two times you know what's nice about the you know, regardless about what we do every day here um, as a trader is that a lot of what I'm trying to relate and trying to answer everybody's questions is that what you do and where you are does affect about 80% of what we do, which is money management. And as much as we're going to talk about stocks and look at some trading, we're also going to be focused on, you know, what you do for a living and and what is, you know, how is it relate to what you do, because no matter what you do, it's the same thing when it comes to trading. So I like to, um, oh, short guns from China. Wow, what time is it there, actually? Got to be 10 o'clock at night. I'm, I don't know what part in China you're from, but I went there like three times doing uh, education down there in China, too, uh, a few years back. But getting back to what we're looking at for today is, um, did everyone hear what happened yesterday with uh, our previous President Trump? Anybody heard about it? I got the stock right here, DJT. Anybody, um, anybody here uh, see, see what happened, heard what happened? All right, because what I like to do is I did a short video. I'm going to post it up here really quick. And uh, when you guys get a chance, you might want to watch this uh, little short video that I did uh, on it. Now, regard, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that us as traders, I'm an actual day trader. I've been doing this for 30 years. Now, what I've learned on the first day on the job is I should have never made my first trade because I didn't know what the hell I was doing because I was self-taught, basically. That's basically what I did. I was very self-taught. I had no idea uh, what I was doing. And what I, want, what I want to do, and if you've been watching my previous episodes with David, I, I've learned how to trade like a market maker because that's eventually after failing you know, for so long, I basically went out there and said, you know what? I live here in New York. It's the financial capital of the world. Why would I not maybe get a job and learn from people that know what they're doing, right? So what you're about to see right now is I should have never made my first trade, never made my first trade. And I should never take anything personal, okay? You know, the re reason why I'm bringing this up is that you might be a huge mega fan, MAGA fan. You might be anti-Trump fan. But as a trader, we don't care about any of that. We are just here to make money. Now, the reason why I bring this up is on that short video uh, that I posted. And we post videos every day on our, on our YouTube channel. But uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there was the stock yesterday. I'm going to bring up DWAC because they changed the symbol from yesterday to today. And what happened, he got 
Um, he got fined a half a billion dollars yesterday uh, due to some, uh, they were trying to say he fraudulent did something. Now, listen, I'm not here to kind of explain who's right, who's wrong. It's irrelevant. It's news and this affects every stock. It happened with Boeing. It happened with, you know, uh, with Amazon. It happens with the, the Tesla. It just so happened this was the big news that was out yesterday. So they lowered his threshold that he had to come up with a half a billion yesterday. He only had to come up with a hundred, uh, with a hundred million, 150 million that made the stock take off. Now, remember, I don't know if you know the news on it, but he just sold and he's going to make several billion dollars on that trade on this company that he just sold. Now, right here, when that news came out, you could see right here, that stock was right around $17 and the stock literally ran to about 57. So it was a huge run up back then in the end of January. Then obviously him getting into all this heat with all these lawsuits and everything. Uh, and they finally, you know, did what they did. The stock literally went from $40 up to 57. And then they changed the symbol yesterday and look where the stock is today. It's up at almost $80 a share. Now, if you do the math, let me go back to that. Okay. It started at 40. It's at 80. It's up a hundred percent. Okay. In an overnight. Now, why is it up? Oh, this is a, uh, a short squeeze or listen, what you have to learn as a trader and with the questions that we're asking here is that it doesn't matter why, if, when, who, why, you know, it all depends on who's buying it and who's selling it. Is the stock going to continue to go up or start to go down? So what I like to do is, and by the way, did anyone trade the stock yesterday or trade it this morning? Did anybody trade it? Just give me a yes or no. Just out of curiosity. No. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. I'd rather you be honest with yourself. Mike, did you trade it? I didn't hear from you. Congress, you didn't trade it? Anyone else? Now, let me go back to what I just mentioned earlier. Why did it go up? Other than, you know, well, I know we know why it went up. I just explained it. But why did it go up so much? That's the question we are asking everyone. Can anyone answer that question? Why did the stock go up so much? Does anybody know? Listen, let me give everybody a little heads up. There are a lot of people in this room. If you cannot answer this question, don't take this the wrong way. You should not be trading. You should not be trading in the market. I'd rather you say, I don't know, than sit there with a deer in the headlights. So I'm going to ask the question one more time. Why did the stock, how did the stock go up? What drove the stock to go up? Thank you very much. Now, now good. More buyers, right? Could everybody just write that, put in the chat room, just to make sure that I know you're all paying attention? Just write buyers. B, don't even, I don't even want you to work too hard on the keyboard. Just hit the B and enter button. Just so I know that you're there. Okay. I don't want to make it sound like I'm talking to myself. Thank you. Okay. More buyers. Now, how much smarter and better trading decisions if you were able to know where those buyers were? So what I like to talk to everybody about, which is what I'm very well known for, um, I, which I don't know if anyone here is subscribed to our um, our Instagram or our YouTube. Hold on, let me bring up my uh, YouTube channel. Just want to show you. I got a couple of really good videos I want to share with you. Uh, hold on, where am I? Uh, because what I'm about to show you here is what I'm going to teach you on the actual charts and everything else. Okay, so. Sign into my channel really quick. Uh, just got to do something here really quick. Actually, let me bring up my Instagram. Instagram looks a little bit is a little bit more easier. By the way, you can watch us on uh, 
You could also follow this along on TikTok and everything else, okay? What happened? I got logged off. Hold on. All right, never mind. I got to. I'll find it back. For some reason, I got logged off on all my channels. But basically, I want to bring up something that we're very well known for. Okay, and it's called right here, Nasdaq Book Viewer. Has anyone ever heard of Nasdaq Book Viewer before? Anybody here heard of it? Use it. Know about it. Okay. So NASDAQ Book Viewer is basically, when I got started, you had to be licensed to have access to this. Okay. This will show you about 50% of all the buyers and sellers in the entire world in the stock that you're trading. So I'll give you an example. Can anyone give me a stock that you're trading right now? Any stock? Anyone in the stock right now? What are you in? Give me a stock. We're going to look it up. And we're going to see where all the buyers are and all where the sellers are. Tesla? Okay. I like Tesla. Now, I'm going to put this over here on the left really quick. Let me bring up Tesla really quick over here. Okay. So Tesla has been on a really big move. All right. Um, stock took a really big hit. You could see it right here. Went from 260, went all the way down to about 160, and it started going up to about 180. Now, regarding about Tesla, and you all can answer this question, okay, uh, is like the goal is, is it is it is now is it going to continue to go higher? Is this the bottom of Tesla? Well, we need to know where the buyers and sellers are. So I'm going to bring Tesla right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what you're seeing right here is every single order out there, you know, at every single price. Now, I'm gonna, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter this out, and I want to see more of the larger blocks of trading. So I'm going to load up and say, don't show me anything uh, less than 10,000 shares. Okay, I want to see the big, big, big block orders, okay? Now, all of a sudden, now you're going to see how it changes, 180, 1, 1, 178, 170. Now you're starting to see things a little change right here. And um, you could see all the orders. Now, you could see 30,000, 70,000, all these big orders. Now, if you look right here, we got 83, 84, 85, 88, 90. Now, what I like to do is um, I like to see where those big orders are. So if the stock has continued to go higher, you could see right here that we have a number of, let me just write down a piece of paper. Actually, you know what? This actually will even help even better. Hold on. Let me split the screen. There we go. Make it a little bit better here. Oh, why is this doing this? Hold on. Open screen. Viewer. There we go. I was like, I don't know why my, my defaults got all messed up. So Tesla, right here. So now you could see a little bit more of the intraday chart in the top left-hand corner. You could see the more yearly chart here in the bottom. And now you, if I draw my trend lines right here, you could see that Tesla was kind of bouncing right here. Now we're hitting some resistance levels right up here, okay? And down here at the bottom, you could see that we got big support levels at 155. You could see you got some resistance levels bound up here at 200. Blow this up a little bit bigger so you guys could see it. Uh, we're trading right around here right now. So we always kind of start off the trend line where we're at. And then we got another couple of big sellers that we can see the 200 right there. But what we're seeing here is this. We got a big seller at 185. We got a big seller at you know, 188. And now what you're, if you really do the math, you know what 81,000 shares are, you know, and if I aggregate those orders, I 
happened over here? Let's see if it loads up. If I unaggregate them, mm, nope, it won't do it. Too many. So basically, you'll see the orders here, and you'll see all the big block orders. Now, what makes this even, you know, and you're just seeing orders. Now, there is something called level four, all right? Now, does anyone here have level four trading? What we're looking at is something called level three. Now, I do a lot of level four trading. So let me bring this up for you. Bring up level four trading up here. And let me just load up the data. Just give me a second here. Now, over here, we're going to see not just the NASDAQ exchange, but we're going to see other exchanges. And we're going to see it on a heat map, OK? Now, do you notice these little red lines that we got going on right here? These red lines? Let me show you something here. Right here on the left-hand side that you see right there, right here, this is all pre-market trading. Did you ever hear program trading? Program trading kicked in around, around 930. You see it right there? And there was some big orders out here. There was one at 180. There was another one at 182. There was another one at 183. And now we got another one at 85. What's happening here is you'll notice that that order, that big order right there, that person got executed. So what makes support resistance levels is buyers and sellers. And you could see right here, we had a big seller and somebody bought it from him. And when that seller got done, it went to the next resistance. And then when that seller got done, it went to the next resistance. And when that seller got done, now it's going to go to the next resistance. That's how, if you notice, the stock is channeling. You see how it's like, it's like, why is it hitting a, a, you know, a doing a double top, a triple bottom, whatever it is, scrap that. What's making the stock preventing from going higher and seller are those buyers and sellers. So not only are you seeing it on a heat map on level four, but you're also seeing it over here on a number. So the difference between NASDAQ book viewer, which is I call level three versus level four, is money. That's it. One costs $15, the other one costs $100. I'm not here to sell them, but I'm just telling you as a trader, nothing is free in the world. You want to know where the orders are? You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to spend some money. When I started at 22 years old, that platform right there, I had to pay over $1,000 a month for it. At 22, I'm 52 now. So imagine 30 years ago, and not in calculating all the inflation. If that was today's times, that probably cost about three, four thousand. Okay. Now, for some of you, you might look like that sounds like a lot of money. You know, three thousand dollars in today's times to pay that. Well, listen, at, if you're in the business, that's the difference. Why, the, you know, I don't know if you guys know this. The richest people in the world, the majority of the richest category people in the world, are in finance. The top 100 richest people in the world are in finance. It's not, you know, it's not Bezos. Oh, Bezos is the richest person in the world. No, Bezos is only one person that owns, uh, that owns, you know, Amazon. How many Amazons are out there in that industry that make up that top 100 billionaires? No, the hedge funds are, you know, and, and Elon Musk. I mean, how many people in the car business, you know, are in the top 100? You know, General Motors ain't. Ford ain't, you know, uh, Lucent ain't. I mean, they're, they're all different kinds out there. So when you want to know why these people are the most powerful and most successful people in the industry, and you want to know the tools that they're using it, this is what they're using. How do I know that? Because I live here in New York, and this is what they do. Now, I want to go over one last thing, and I want to check out another stock, because some of you guys also give me a couple of stocks. Now, remember that we pointed out here that there are some resistance levels around 200 and 260. Well, let me show you what we got right here. Let me bring up level four because you're not going to see it on level three. Look over here where it says at 200. You see there's a 200,000 share seller out there, okay? Now, I, want, I have a question to ask everybody. Do you have any idea why that 200,000 share kicked in at 930? Does anybody know why that is? How, you know, why wasn't it there before? Why did it just show up right there at 930? Does anybody know? 220,000. Take a guess. Why would that stock hit 200,000? If you don't know the answer, give me a question mark. All right. 
I'll tell you why. Okay. Cause I think a lot of people are here a little nervous and don't want to embarrass themselves. So no, I'm glad that you brought that up, William. It's not a dark pool. Do you even know what a dark pool is, William? Because I used to do dark pools all the time. Actually, I have instructors that teach dark pools on the industry. Okay. And by the way, they're, they all work. Some of them were my, my own instructors and students. So basically a dark pool is when one brokerage firm sells, does a trade within their own brokerage firm. You know, they do a cross trade. Okay. That makes about maybe 5% of the volume. That's not a dark pool that right there. Yeah. It's um, it's when in one exchange, you know, when it, it's like one broker trader is going to trade within another trader within their own company. They, they want to do a wash trade within each other. It doesn't go out in the street. You know, Listen, it's about 5% of the market's volume. Honestly, that's not your concern. What you're seeing right there, that's called algorithms, okay? Anybody here trade options? Anybody trade an option? Do you even know what an option really is? What is really an option? An option is what it's actually called. It's an option. You're basically, instead of buying the stock, somebody is actually lending you their stock, okay? That's basically what an option is. Somebody goes, you know what? You want to rent my stock? No problem. I'll rent it to you. So this is a couple of things that you're seeing. A lot of people have leaps. A lot of people have like option calls out there. So what's happening first, the person who's, Selling that option is protecting themselves by covering those orders out there. God forbid it does get there. It's going to go out there and execute it. It's basically, that's how they're hedging themselves. So if you want to, if you want to do an option call and your target's at 200, they already, they already make sure that God forbid it does get to 200. They're going to cover that trade, you know? So that's, that's, that could be, that could be one thing. It, it's algorithms, you know, um, that's basically also what it is. It's high frequency trades. That's what, what you're looking at. So think about it, fellow traders. How much better is it in smarter, better trading decisions you're making right here just by seeing what we're doing at doing it? All right. Uh, question is it uh is it price you pay to sell to control the stock in the future? Yes, it's exactly what it is. But now you're seeing those real orders if they do exist. Now, I'm not here to trade you options. I don't really trade options very little. Um, options are very, very risky. I just tell you right now that if you want to be a good option trader, you got to learn how to trade the stocks first. You got to remember what makes a stock move is the movement of the, uh, uh, what makes an option move is the movement of the stock. So if you wouldn't want to know what's going on with the, if you want to know what's going, what option to trade, you should probably learn how to know how to trade the stock first. Okay. Don't get caught up on options where people like, you know, they, you know, it, it, listen, they all got, it's got a very sexy story. It's got a very, you know, it's very enticing. Uh, I know everyone likes it because they hear about the risk factor, but believe it or not, it's a lot riskier than just to buy the stock. But because when you look at this, be like, well, why should I buy a $200,000 $200, worth of stock when I go buy $2,000 worth of stock, you know, doing an option? That's great. Well, there are 20,000 stocks out there you could trade. You don't have to worry, just trade options on Tesla. Uh, so anyway, that's basically where you're getting that resistance levels around 200. You saw it on there, uh, but the difference is you're not going to see it on the book viewer. You get this is more geared towards a little bit more of a short term day trade, where the other one you're going to get it more on the long term. So you can also swing trade and do investing on what I'm talking about. Now uh, we got another person, Ally. Okay, somebody gave the stock Ally. Let's look at that one. A-L-L-Y. Let me check it out and see how it's going. Okay. Now, the problem with Ally is that we're not really getting that much volume on it. Okay. That's the reason why I'm not too not a big fan of Ally. And I don't need to see 10,000 share orders. I'm going to break this down to 1,000. And let me bring this up and see what we got going on here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. A-L-L-Y. So Ally, you could see it, it's a stock traded 
300,000 shares. There's not a lot of orders out there. Now, can you, can we use this um, long-term? Well, let me ask you this. Um, was it Aman? Uh, it's at, uh, I'm sorry, who is that? Uh, Les, Les, Step, uh, Les Step, is that your name? Do you have a game plan? Do you know where you want to get in, where you get out? I mean, you're doing pretty good on a swing trade. But do you know where you want to take a profit? Because remember one thing, you didn't make any money until you sell it, okay? So what is your game plan? What is your money management risk on this? That's really where it comes down to it. Because I could tell you this, from what I could see here, you don't really have that many buyers over here on the left. And long-term, I don't know if you got a game plan, but you got a 16,000 share buyer right around that 37.75. Um, not really seeing that many orders out there. You can see it right here when I zoom in and zoom out. So I can see we're program trading. You got a seller at 42, 44. Remember, you're trading right now at 39. But you can use this towards a long-term trade. But looks like you got some good buyers holding here around like 38, 39. But there's not that much volume. It's not like we saw that 200,000 share seller and buyer on Tesla. So you just got to remember, you're trading stock that's trading with very, very light liquidity. Let me do another one um, who came up with, uh, Aman came up with Walmart. So Walmart uh, did a reverse stock split. It's not a $60 stock anymore. WH, I mean, WMT. Now, Walmart um, trade about 2 million shares. Walmart trades more in a New York stock exchange. So you might not get that many orders on the NASDAQ. And if I go and I check out what's going on over here, and let me see what's going on level four, WMT. Check out the data here. And uh, on the long-term chart, looks like we got some 18,000 share sellers around 62. You got a 24,000 share buyer around 60. Not seeing any other program trading anywhere long-term. Everything is a little bit more short-term. So from 62 to 60, stock's trading. So the stock really doesn't move that much. Um, if you look over here on the long-term chart, and we did say 62 was that resistance, right? Didn't we say that? So right around there is that seller right around there. So you could see, see these sellers are 61, 61, 40, 62. So you could see that's where it's basically been having a tough time this past month. It's been on a really good trend, you know, due to, you know, the, the reverse stock split that they did, um, which is always a good sign sometimes because does anybody know why they do a reverse stock split? I don't even, I mean, why would they do that? I don't know if you guys ever know, why would they do a reverse stock split? Well, main reason why they do a reverse stock split because they want to make it uh, the company's in trouble. No, no, no. They would add that's that's not who told you that. Uh, less dilution of the stock. Mm, no, no, that's not the reason. That's not the main reason why. Anyone else? Greg, what about you? Greg Mills. I didn't hear you. Capital, you're getting there. You're getting close. You're getting close. Anybody else want to take a shot? Why would they do a reverse stock split? To be, uh, to be, to stay listed, you are absolutely right, but you got it backwards. That's on a reverse stock split, not on a stock split. Okay, so to make it more accessible for retailers, to sell more shares, there we go. Okay, so now now it looks like some of you are starting to make sense. They want to make it more affordable. Does anybody remember what, what Amazon was going for before they did the stock split? Anybody remember? Was that like 2000 2100 Can anybody afford to buy a $2,000 stock? So they did a reverse stock split for the first time. Google was trading at 2000 What'd they do? They did a reverse stock split. They want to make it more affordable, cheaper shares so more people could buy it. So that's actually a good sign. Now, I'm going to do a pop quiz. Let's see how savvy you traders are. 
Does anybody know of the next biggest stock split that can, that's coming out on a very expensive stock? Does anybody know it? I forgot the stock symbol, but I know the name because I don't trade it. It's too expensive. Thank you very much. Chipotle. Chipotle, if you guys ever looked at it, I don't think anybody here could afford to trade Chipotle. Maybe some of you at 3000 But could you imagine the stock was at 1700 went to 3000 It basically did a double. It's up. I mean, as much as it sounds like, wow, that's a lot. I know it's a lot, but is it really a lot? It's only up 100%. If you compare this to NVIDIA, um, SMGI, only, I could give you a whole list of stocks. Uh, coin with Bitcoin. I mean, those things did better. But like, you know, it's got, I know it's got good options played on it, but what they're doing is they just want to make it more affordable. That's the only reason why they're doing that. And by doing that, more people are going to want to trade it. Does everybody know what the reverse stock split is? I think they want to bring it right around... I think they're doing a, uh, was it a 10 for one stock split? I think they're doing or 15. I think it was 15 to one reverse stock split they're going to do. So that just makes it more affordable. And that's it. Now, by doing that, the disadvantage of doing that also, I mean, look, the stock only traded 48,000 shares. It's a 50 to one split. That's even better because they really want to always get it under, under $100. That's basically what they want to do. They always want to get it between 100. Yeah, it's 50 to 1. So that means it's going to bring the stock around $60 at that price. So now envision that the 48,000 is going to multiply by times 50. So that's going to really be the average volume on that. So I think you're going to see Chipotle is going to be a lot more in the news. You're going to see a lot of people talking about it. More people want to trade it, you know, and, and so on. All right. But I'm glad we're talking about it. Glad you guys brought that up, you know, but Chipotle, because I know when I look up Chipotle here, OMG, I can't trade it. I mean, it's really, I have a default at a thousand. You really can't follow any orders out there. All right. Now, oh, see, I, I typed it wrong. Sorry. It's still not going to come up. How are you going to get orders? Look, not going to get any real orders out there. All right, so um, the next thing I want to kind of talk about is um, some of you probably want to know is like, how did you find these stocks? Like, what is your style of going through? Now, as a day trader, we really don't care what we trade. We're just here to make money, okay? But what we do care about is money management. Everybody out there that po pointed out a stock out there, maybe they were pretty good swing trades, but didn't work too well for Tesla. And you know what? Everyone always gave me an expensive stock, okay? Now, are you in the ex expensive stock business or are you in the making money business? But it's not about making money. Do you know what the biggest problem why people fail in trading? Does anybody know? Do you realize that trading is about an 80 to 90% failure rate in trading? Does anybody know why, why that is? Anybody know? Losses. Losses is what make people lose money in market. Okay, right. They don't know how to limit their risk. It's not that stocks are unpredictable. Okay. If you don't know what you're looking at, you shouldn't be trading in the market. Money management is the biggest thing. Now, here at Cyber Training University, uh, by the way, I'm going to invite all of you guys to come in. Um, you know, I'm going to actually be doing a free class on Wednesday. I want to invite all of you guys to come in. I'm going to spend more time, you know, teaching our style and everything else. So, I mean, you guys could register now or you could register later. I'm just give you the link. I'll give you a short version. Um, www.ctu.co forward slash free. Just give you that link right there. So um, if anybody wants to register, you can, guys can come in there and register. But I'm going to invite all of you guys to come into my trading room. And here's our professional trading room. And right now they're doing, they do live audio commentary. We do it from like 9 a.m. to 10.30. We just finished. We actually just finished right now. It's uh, 10.36. So we stopped audio commentary. 
Now, right here on the left-hand side, um, these are all our instructors. You can see all our instructors right here. Josh, me, Debbie, Alex, John, Rich, all of them. And these are all our traders down here that you can see here, all the list down here. Okay, so the list just keeps going on and on and on. Um, right now, we got close to 200 traders in there. And, you know, right here in the middle column, um, basically, you could see that if I scroll up, you could see all the instructors and the traders. And, you know, we'll, we're actually showing images of like, look at this iceberg order. Look at that iceberg order. Look, look, at, look at that high frequency trade. Look at that high frequency, you know, look at that dark pool, whatever you're looking at. And basically, um, we have an alert service. So you can actually get an app uh, where it says mobile app. And you could actually download the app right here. And you get alerts if you're not around. Actually, you can even watch the whole trading room on your phone, too. So, um, and then right here, we're broadcasting. It's all live. And we're right here on the right-hand side. And you can see all the traders in there. Um, we're looking at a stock. Now, I want to bring up a stock that they're looking in right now. So, when we get around this time, things start slowing down after about 1030. The most volatile time in the market to trade is from like 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern to like 830. Then program trading kicks in. I'll even show you right here. Um, scroll over up here. And uh, oops, I went a little too far. You can see here 930. You can see all the trades right here, all the chatting going on. So 940, you can see right here, 830, 8 o'clock in the morning. You see that trading like stocks. We're, we're trade, this room is open all the way up to about 7 o'clock in the morning. You can see Andrea, he's from Canada, uh, Toronto, you know, talking about good morning. They talked about Reddit, you know, talking about some stocks that they're in. So basically, right now, I want to talk about what they're trading now, okay? Because the past is the past. The future is what we're focusing on. They're looking at an MESO. So I'm going to bring up MESO. And I'm going to bring it up over here, too. So looking at MESO, um, you could see that the stock has got some good movement today. It's uh, traded about 24 million shares. The stock is up, is up 46%, all right, uh, up really, really nicely. And, you know, it's got a nice little push. I'm just bringing it up over here on my level four and see what we got with that one, too. Yes, yeah, so let's see. I get the data on it. Hold on a second. Always takes a little bit more time to get uh, to load up here. Now, looking at this stock right here, you could see it. It started around ten o'clock this morning, about less than forty minutes ago. It ran from two seventy, and it ran to whopping. It ran to a high right around three twenty five. Now, let's see if um, if some of you here could know just simple math. What is two dollars and seventy five cents? Minus three dollars and twenty-five cents. Three seventy-five minus three twenty-five. How much is that? What is that? What is that? What does that come out to? Fifty cents? Really? Does that sound like a lot? Fifty cents? Does everybody agree? Does everybody agree it's like fifty cents? Fifty cents, right? Okay. Well. What is 50 cents times 1,000 shares? What is 50 cents times 1,000 shares? Can anybody add that up for me? Oh, $500. Is that a lot? If you did, I always like to do this. So here's my calculator. So 500 times how many days are in a week five times 52 weeks at the year it's about 130,000 did 50 cents sound like a lot now if you could do that every day is anybody happy with that to make 50 cents because some of you kind of look at it like what the hell is 50 cents that doesn't sound like a lot you just show me stocks of three four dollars twenty dollars 50 cents, that's it? Anyone here making 130000 a year? Risking only $2,600? Okay. So, it's, yeah, not bad, right? Nice piece of perspective. Do you ever thought it that way? That's called money management. 
And guess what? You're done for the day. Now, you probably want to now the question is, how did you know it was going to go up? And how did you know when to sell it? Well, let me bring up a trend line here for you. And you can see here, I'm going to blow this up for you. You can see right around here that around 8 o'clock this morning, which some of you probably didn't know, that pre-market does have resistance levels. It hit resistance levels there. And then what happened is it's got support levels down here. Now, when you look over here, you'll notice resistance, 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 support, support, resistance, support. Now, the only way that those support and resistance levels actually work in the past is we have to see it in the future. And when I go over here, clear all drawings, you'll notice that right around here between these three numbers, you'll notice that nobody was here. But then when we started getting right around here, all the orders started showing up. And they all started showing up right around here, around between 10 o'clock and 10.15. See that right there? And that's when the stock really made its big run. But then when we got right around here, where it finally stopped, that's when the D the the, v, uh, the VWAP kicked in, which you could see, and that's when the that's when the sellers started showing up. Now, if you didn't have a game plan and didn't start seeing all the program trading kicking in, it's starting to feel like John Madden on uh, NFL Network. Uh, if you didn't see all these orders starting to kick in right around here, now you just basically started running the stock down. So that's why the stock now is going from 440, and now we're down to 310. So, yeah, granted, you still made money, right? But the problem that you have there is if you didn't have that game plan, you would have lost it. Now, that is what we do here at Cyber Trade University. That's how we teach you how to trade, okay? It's about how to find them and how to take profits. It's all, a lot of it has to do with money management. Now, did anyone ever hear of the stock MESO? Because last time I asked everyone here, you guys are telling me CVS, Walmart. Uh, uh, what else are you guys telling me here? You, you, they were telling me, um, you know, Tesla. I mean, just whatever the list is. Now, do you care what this company does? Or do you care about it only cost me 2600 bucks to buy it on 1,000 shares? Because most people have that perspective is that, well, you know, I didn't think there these stocks even exist, or I thought I couldn't buy stocks at that cheap. That's why I trade an option. You see, sometimes you don't have to trade an option. You could just trade the stock. Now, I don't know if everybody knows this, but David, um, he always brings this up once in a while. He forgot to bring it up today, but David found me um, when he, before he started, uh, timing research and he really built this company great, you know, the whole podcast. He used to watch me doing traders challenges. Okay. Um, I used to be at the money show and, you know, I'm a 12 time champion. Actually, I would have been a 25 time champion, but half the people didn't show up. Uh, but he used to watch me do traders challenges. And the first thing he said, Fausto, could you come on one of my shows? I love the way you're actually teaching. And he thought that I'd be a very big asset uh, to, to his listener base. And this basically what we do, you know, and from the day David saw me to the day of today, really nothing has changed other than today you get ticket charges for free. Okay. Where before I used to pay $25 a ticket, you used to have to pay, you know, a thousand dollars for the software. Now you're getting it for like a fraction of that price. And that's really what other than changed. My thing you know, why I teach is because when I used to sit in that audience and I look at everybody in this room and I see you and I see people like Greg that still has not chatted back, Mike, John, Paul, all you guys are like a deer in the headlights. What bothers me is that I know what a big failure rate is and I know what you're going through. Rich uh, Marrick, I haven't heard from you. You know, 
And the reason I'm calling you guys out is because I've seen your faces before in, in the audience and people are sitting there starving for education. But the reason why people fail is because you didn't get educated. You didn't learn from a mentor and you're looking at the wrong stuff. So listen, if you want to learn how to play the game and you want to know why these stocks are going up and going down, you got to register for my event. You got to come in there and register for it. And I was going to bring this up. I'll bring up this page. And by the way, um, if you do register, hold on one second. Let me just fix something here. Uh, design, uh, hold on. Uh, slideshows. I just got to fix something here. Set up slideshow. I just want to put this all in one window. So if you do, if you do, the guys do register. Um, I'll give you my free book. You know what I mean? You, and you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, you get it here. I'll give it to you for free. So all you got to do is click on that link I gave up there. And basically, I'll give you a one-week day trading crash course on it. Listen, I know you got a lot of presenters coming up in the next you know, couple of days. Uh, there's a lot of people lined up today going to be coming up. But you know what? If you, want it, if you like what I spoke about and you... Just saw just a fraction of what I spoke about within 45 minutes. Imagine what you'll learn in a week. You know what I mean? Like in one week, being part of the trading room, listen to the other traders. And by the way, you don't have to be there every day. You can come in whatever time you want. You can come later, you can come sooner, whatever, whatever it may be. But think about it. Just for, you know, you want to come and join a little free class. You want to get my book or pay me $47 on Amazon. Okay. Number one bestseller. Just click on that link and I'll get you in. All right. Now, before I go, does anybody have any questions? Any other questions, everyone? What are they trading right now? I'm just going to look what they're in their trading room. Uh, looks like they're trading C uh, CGC right now in the trading room. Here they go. You can see them right there. CD, uh, CDC. CGC was another big runner. This thing ran from like $3 to like $8. Right there. We got that. Um. Let me just bring this up right here and see what that stock is doing really quick. I just want to see what they're looking at. CGC. Yeah. CGC was a really nice move. Look at that cheap little stock, $5. Right? Boom. All the way up to about seven, uh, 725. It's funny. Why did it stop at 725? You might ask. Okay. How did it get stopped at 725? Right there, 725. Okay, we won't, it looks like we got a 10,000 share seller out here at 730. And see what CGC is doing on level four. It's loading up the data right here. Hmm. You could see that you got a 18,000 and 13,000 share seller right here. Not really a lot, but you got a couple of sellers out there. Uh, question I came across here. How do I get book a uh, book map? Okay. So listen, you can look them up, but honestly, Lee, could you do me a favor? Actually do yourself a favor and everyone else. Why don't you email me? And let me give you, we have a step-by-step video that will tell you how to set it up because let me tell you what's going to end up happening a lot of people are going to go out there and i know you want to just like go out and buy it right can i just explain it to you first how it works and how to set it up because a lot of these windows that you'll get and a lot of you know this as a brokerage firm you might be buying a platform be like okay i got, I got it he told me to get it but now i know how to use it this is why people lose and fail in the market it's so Unfortunately, it is so easy to just, you know, go out there and just sign up. But wouldn't it be better if someone explained it to you? That's why you're here, right? So why don't you just register and start from there? Uh, and, that, and that would be the best way to go about it. And yes, I mean, and, and, and you could see like the CGC is probably going up. Big buyer came in. Um, 
It just came in. You can see volume starting to kick in right here. 19,000 shares. Look at that nice little run. $7. And it looks like it's going all the way up to seven twenty. Look at Look how that. Listen, we just brought it up right now. Look at that. The VWAP just kicked in. Look at all these big buyers. Green, green, green. That means it's a lot of buyers going on. A lot of people are just buying and buying and buying it. Right now, it's going to seven fifty. Look right here. What's going to happen right here? Let me zoom in. That big buyer just got executed for 13,000 shares. You could see it right here. He's gone. Now the next biggest order is at about 17,000 at 770. Not bad for a nice little quick little profit right there. That's what trading is all about. Once again, how did I find out about it? It was right in the cyber group room. They were trading it all along. This is how it basically came in. I didn't even know about it because I'm too, you know, focused on teaching you guys, but this is what we talk about in our trading room. So listen, I'm out of time here. If anybody here would like to join the trading room and want to get those videos, just take uh, take my registration right there, Fausto, uh, ctu.co.free. Just click on that. And uh, like I said, we'll get you registered. All right, guys. So you got about, about 10 minutes before the next presenter comes in. You got some time to register. Thanks for having me, David. It's always been great to be on your show. And everybody, look forward to seeing you all in the trading room. And don't forget to watch those videos on YouTube. Uh, we got some really good shorts, some really good lessons there, great content. Um, so when you guys are free and you're done here, definitely go out there. And please make sure you like us, friend us, and ring that bell so you can get our alerts. We broadcast live every morning at 9 a.m. and at 2.30. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Thanks, David.